quick update of the house, shall we? I now have a couch. And we got a chair and a TV on the wall. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this couch is very comfortable. I'm a big fan. Uh, and it looks nice. I like how it looks and it fits the, fits the room well. So uh, that's positive. On another note, today is the first F1 race. I'm going to go over to Tasha's house and watch it. We are in an F1 fantasy league. I don't know how many of you play F1 fantasy, anyone? If you have an F1 fantasy team, let me know in the comments. But my fantasy team is getting crushed in week one. So through qualifying, I'm in ninth place out of 10, which is not great. McLaren really is letting me down so far, but we will see how the race goes. The race is happening right now, actually, but we're gonna watch it on replay since we didn't wanna wake up at like seven in the morning. Yeah, it's gonna be a good day. I'm excited, F1 season's here. I'm like going through in my head all the different ways I'm gonna create my spreadsheets, my algorithms for the picks and all that stuff. So that's cool. Uh, I actually woke up this morning excited, uh, which is something I don't usually do. Uh, I don't usually get like anxious or anything like that and just wake up and be ready to go for the day. But yeah, I woke up, got very little sleep, but I feel great and ready to go. So before we go to do that, uh, I'm gonna head to the facility. I'm gonna get some planning done, get some content stuff done, uh, and then head over to Tasha's, get some snacks and watch this F1 race. This is the setup today. We got uh, March Madness streaming on the big TV. Uh, we're gonna get some plow balls done here. We got Edgetronic back over there. So yeah, it's gonna be throwing and March Madness and uh, we'll get after it. got it we still got it didn't leave me didn't leave me and that brings me to a very key point for my young baseball players out there and for all the pros that watch these videos as well think about this anytime you don't have a pitch in a game oh my curveball wasn't there i didn't have my slider it's not my changeup was flat blah 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 okay think about this how long did it take you to develop that pitch you've been throwing it for 10 years five years two years maybe it's a pitch you just picked up like two months ago but you've been throwing it for two months, even in that case, to get to this point. You think it's gonna leave you in one day? Think about this, you have to do something over and over and over and over again to write that skill to memory, to become proficient at it, right? So learning a bad skill, learning the wrong skill, is the exact same thing as learning the right skill. Your body doesn't know that throwing a changeup with uh, zero inches of vertical movement is the right, and throwing a changeup with 10 vertical movement is wrong. It just knows that it's two different skill sets. If it took you two months to learn a good skill, you think you're gonna learn a bad skill in one outing? No. So the vast majority of times that you don't have a pitch, it's because something was just off with your body, all right? You weren't as prepared to pitch that day. You were a little bit sore. Maybe you were a little bit tired, something like that. If you think about going and fixing your body, Get your body recovered. Make sure you're hydrated. Make sure you're eating well, sleeping well. Make sure you're doing what you need to do in the weight room. Make sure that you're optimally prepared physically for your next start. And I pretty much guarantee you, your pitches will be back. You won't even have to work on them in between, okay? If you do go work on them in between, likely what you're gonna have happen is you're gonna put your body in more of a hole. You're gonna reinforce bad habits, bad patterns, which gets you further away from getting it back and you're gonna make sure that you're not as prepared for your next outing because you're adding volume and intensity where you normally wouldn't in your routine, which is gonna exacerbate the problem even more. So, word of caution, if I have to sum it all up, relax, okay? One bad outing is not gonna change how you have your pitch or you don't have your pitch or whatever. It's gonna be their next outing, okay? Don't worry about it in between, relax, say it was a bad day, get your body right, it'll be their next time out. Pro tip for y'all. So here's the deal. Since I am not allowed at spring training, since I've been banished for no reason, I've had to come up with my own spring training ramp up plan. And now I get to do it the way I would like to do it instead of the way that the teams always force me to do it. So this is what we have. I've redone my throwing program for the next uh, month. Today is the 20th of March. I've done this out through the 17th 
of April because my admin leave ends on uh, April 16th. So uh, the 17th I'll be hopefully cleared to play. And uh, that's what it looks like. I'll put a screenshot up on the screen so you guys can see it better. But anyway, color coded. Red days are recovery days. Yellow days are see how you feel days. Don't push it too much. Green days are uh, ramp up go days. Um, get after it, max intent, this type of thing. And uh, yeah, so today I'm gonna do some change up command. Um, get up in uh, that 84, 83, 84 range with the, uh, with the fastball, nice and easy. And then tomorrow we'll go mix in some cutters and some change ups, stuff like that. And then Tuesday, athletic velo, that'll simulate a bullpen leading into a Friday, uh, two innings pitch, live at bats. Now that's kind of what I'm planning right now. I'll uh, see, how it, see how it plays out, but uh, feeling pretty sharp. Gonna get outside for some of these, get on some dirt mounds, find some hitters that wanna go outside, find a field, something like that. But uh, yeah, time to start ramping up. Oh, one of the things I forgot to mention is the difference between how teams usually ramp me up and how I would prefer to ramp me up. I go into spring training ready to throw like three or four innings uh, just cause I do live at bats. So I can handle a lot more high intent days. Now usually the teams go two bullpens. So you go bullpen, day off, bullpen, day off day off, live at bat, two days off, live at bat, and then into a game. And that that's because you have like two and a half weeks after pitchers and catchers report till game start. I don't need any of that BS. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna jump straight into high intent days. So every uh, second or third day for the first two weeks will be a high intent day. And then once I start getting past three innings uh, in live at bats, I'll scale that back to two, where I'll have a bullpen and a live at bat. This is a linear ramp up. Most times teams have you go like one inning, two innings, two innings, three innings, three innings, four innings, something like that. I don't need that BS. I'm gonna linearly ramp this up. So we'll go two, then three, then four, then five, and then I'll be ready to throw uh, six or seven innings or however many innings and 100 plus pitches on, um, yeah, uh, when my leave ends on um, the 16th. So. Uh, that's kind of the difference. Um, teams take it a lot slower because players come in in all sorts of different shapes and sizes and readiness levels and stuff like that. So they kind of have to cater towards the middle of the group and do what's good for the majority. Um, I don't need it. I'm way more prepared than anyone else is going into spring training. So uh, yeah, we're just going to linearly ramp this thing. We're going to throw Work on uh, work on some velo. It looks like uh, three, six, nine high intent days uh, over the next month, which means that's basically one every third day. So we'll get some velo training in and make use of it, both in the weight room and throwing wise. And yeah, going to spring training. We're gonna sit 95 plus this year and dominate. Well, now that I got some of my training for the day done, it is time to go check out the F1 race at Tasha's house. I have not yet seen the results, which is great. Uh, hopefully I can continue that and we don't see who wins when we're trying to load the stream up and go watch the race and have a blast. Uh, hopefully Verstappen wins. I don't have him on my team, but uh, yeah, go Max. Hello, hello everyone. dramatic fashion. Three Red Bull engines went poof. First off, Gasly, just ball of flames. Uh, and then Verstappen's engine went out and then Perez's engine went out. So I came in 10th out of 10 this week in the fantasy league. It's tough. And I'm now in a very bad mood because my boy Sergio, <laughs> through no fault of his own, went from a podium to last, or like 17th or whatever. Just RIP Sergio, every time. Sergio gets screwed more than any driver. It's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, now we got Duke on playing Michigan State. So if Duke loses today, I'm, that'll be it for the vlog. Uh, that's it, I quit. And you may never see me again. So I need Duke to pull through. Well, thank God Duke pulled it out. They were giving me a heart attack, a heart attack there for a second. Down five with like four minutes left, but closed on a 20 to six run, so sigh of relief.
Okay, now back to work, headed back to the facility. I'm gonna get some content filmed and I don't know what else, build my F1 spreadsheet maybe, cause I finished last, so I need to not do that ever again. Hey, check out what just came in. We got some blue Bauer outage merch. So if you wanna get yours, I don't know if these will be up by the time the vlog comes out or not, but you should head over to trevorbauer.com. Use the code VLOG10, that's VLOG10 for a 10% discount. Go get yourself some Bauer Outage merch. All right, we're gonna get a workout in today. We got a nice little superset. We're gonna do an assault bike, eight second sprint, followed by banded uh, front squat, box squat, banded bench press, banded deadlift, and over here, a banded pull up. Now, uh, the reason for doing the bands is kind of complex. And uh, I'm gonna have Tim here explain why we would do bands instead of just weights. Uh, it changes the, the force curve that you have to uh, apply to the, to the lift, right? Yes, absolutely. You hit around the head with the force velocity curve. Um, as you're going through the movement and as the bands start uh, adding the tension, it's gonna significantly increase towards the end of the range of motion. Go so, so basically like, if you have a hundred pounds on the bar and you lift it, then you're going to have a hundred pounds the whole way up and down. But if you have a hundred pounds plus the band, you might have a hundred pounds at the bottom when the band has some slack in it. But at the top, you might have 150 pounds because of the band tension. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you're, you're increasing, uh, the, the force at the very top at the, basically at the peak of the lift, if you will. Uh, and that's the force velocity curve that we're looking for is we're trying to get the tension to be, uh, more in that athletic range of motion. Uh, and that would be the best way to describe it. Ow. Okay, so I just finished up the workout and now I'm off to dinner with DJ. Uh, my boy Derek Johnson, uh, favorite coach I've ever played for, and I'm gonna deliver him this. Hard to see, but uh, that's a little glass replica of the Cy Young Award. Um, it's got the, it's got it kind of engraved in the middle of the glass. It's kind of, it's really cool. He's out here for spring training, of course, because he's with the Reds. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go get dinner, catch up, and I'm gonna deliver this to him. So let's go. Well, I'm on the way home. It's great to catch up with the. I didn't want to film a whole lot during our conversation, of course, just out of respect to him, but uh, it was a great dinner. For those who don't know, he's obviously the you know, pitching coach for the, for the Reds, uh, Derek Johnson. Uh, but I've known Derek uh, since I was 14 or 15. He was the pitching coach at Vanderbilt University at the time, and I wanted to play for him at Vanderbilt, but um, he didn't offer me a scholarship uh, until it was too late. And uh, I you know, make fun of him for it all the time, like, oh, you didn't want me to play for you and all this stuff. But uh, anyway, the point of all that is I've known him over half my life, and um, he's a, a close friend and by far the best uh, coach that I've, that I've played for in pro ball. Yeah, good to catch up with him and hopefully in some small way show my appreciation for him, for everything that he's done for me. So I just I appreciate him. I appreciate everything he's done for baseball, everything he's done for me. And, just a really good, really good dude. Yeah, anyway, um, on the way home, gonna get some sleep um, and get back at it tomorrow.